Welcome once again. Right now we're at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. What scripture is inspired of God? Paul wrote to Timothy, verse 16, Every scripture is God-breathed. If you haven't seen our previous video, I encourage you to go back and watch that because we talked about this. We touched on this subject back in that video. I want you to picture this for a minute. We have Paul sitting, maybe with a quill in his hand, with some ink, and he's writing a personal letter to Timothy. He didn't have in mind that anybody else would read this. He wrote this to Timothy, and he said that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Every scripture is God-breathed. Now you gotta think for a minute here. At that point in time, the New Testament didn't exist. The New Testament wasn't considered to be Holy Scripture. The New Testament wasn't even canonized back then. When Paul sat down to write to Timothy, telling Timothy that every Scripture or all Scripture is God-breathed or inspired by God, what Scripture was he talking about? It's not reasonable to say that Paul was actually referring to his own personal letter to Timothy. Paul didn't claim to write the Word of God. He didn't claim that what he was writing was Scripture. And it wasn't even considered to be Scripture at that time. What was he talking about? Scripture. Well, obviously, Paul was talking about the Scripture that was actually considered to be Scripture in his day. It would have been what we call the Old Testament, plus a lot of the other books, such as the books that are included in the Septuagint, because we know that the Septuagint was really kind of like a standard Bible in those days, and also the other sacred texts, such as what we would find in the Dead Sea Scrolls. These texts were considered to be scripture in the days of Paul. How do we know that? We know that because a lot of what we call the early church fathers mentioned a lot of extra biblical books and referred to them as scripture. And of course, the common scriptures such as, you know, the Torah, the prophets, you know, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Micah, and the writings such as Psalms and Proverbs, they were considered to be scripture in those days. So when Paul said all scripture is given by inspiration of God, he wasn't referring to any of the New Testament scriptures. Now, don't get me wrong. We know that the early church preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, the true gospel of Jesus Christ from the scriptures that existed before Jesus was even born. When the men of Berea in Acts chapter 17 tested Paul's message, tested the gospel of Jesus Christ that Paul was preaching, by using the scriptures of those days. Of course, they didn't use the New Testament scriptures because a lot of them didn't even exist in those days. They used Tanakh, the Septuagint, and other sacred texts. They used those scriptures to test to see if what Paul was saying was actually true. They used those scriptures, the scriptures, the books that were written before Jesus was even born. But that's not all. Paul went into detail here about the scriptures, what they actually do, what their purpose is, what their function is. Paul said every scripture is God-breathed and profitable for teaching. Here we are, teaching. I mean, a lot of churches today, they don't even really teach the scriptures. They don't even really teach from the scriptures. It's, it's more like just like self-help messages and you know feel-good messages. It's not even really teaching. But Paul said that the scripture, the real scripture, is for teaching, for reproof. That's a good one, for reproof. Another translation actually says for rebuking. So we're to use the scriptures for teaching and for rebuking, for reproofing, for correction. Wow, how many people actually receive correction, you know, when they hear the preacher preach? And for instruction in righteousness. Powerful, powerful term here. Instruction in righteousness. How to live right. The word righteousness here actually comes from the word right. I mean, righteousness is actually the state of being right. But why? Paul says that each person who belongs to God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good 
work. And again, how many people actually hear messages about work in church anymore, especially Protestant churches? I mean, you hear a lot about faith and about love and all this kind of stuff, but about work, what does God want you to do? Well, I can just hear someone object and say, well, it says, you know, the work of God is to believe in Jesus Christ. Well, there are two important points you must consider here. To believe in a rabbi, and don't forget, Jesus, Yeshua, was a rabbi, okay? To actually believe in a rabbi means that you do what he says, to actually do what he says. You can't say, oh, I believe in a rabbi just by believing that he existed or believing that he did something, but no. To actually believe in a rabbi means that you actually do what he says. And what did Jesus say? He said to obey the Father, to obey God. He taught everybody not just to obey God, but also to obey God in a very, very deeper sense than they ever thought possible before. Not just obeying the law of God on the surface, but driving it deeper in your soul. So to believe in Jesus is to obey God, to obey the Father, not just on the surface, but really in your, in your heart, in your spirit. This is truly believing in Jesus Christ, not just having some kind of a mental ascension of some kind of doctrine or dogma. So that's the first point. But the second point is this too. Don't lose perspective. Paul here is talking about the scriptures that existed before the New Testament was canonized, okay? He's talking about the scriptures, i.e. Old Testament scripture. Teaching, rebuking, correction, and righteousness, and work according to those scriptures. Don't forget the context here. Test things as the men of Berea did in Acts chapter 17. And to actually relearn some things if we actually you know, accepted things that we thought was truth, but we later on found out it wasn't truth. Let's not be too proud. Let's not have so much pride in our hearts that we assume or think that we would never be duped, that we would never believe something that's not true. You need to be like the men of Berea. Keep on seeking truth and keep on seeking God with all your heart. If you do, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.